It's the Weather Extreme video. This is for Friday evening, the 17th. I'm James Spann. Got a big rain event, a soaker coming up as we kick off the weekend. A lot to talk about, and let's do it. We'll start with some of the Skycam shots around the network this afternoon. First off, coming from Demopolis. Ooh, I like that shot. That's gorgeous. High cirrus clouds over the Tom Bigby River. Those are 20,000 feet and up, where it's all ice up there, ice crystals. There's the view coming from Parrish in Walker County. Those are mid-level clouds. And down south, the Gulf Shore Sky Cam. They've got a dual threat this weekend of flash flooding and severe weather. And uh, it's a big Mardi Gras weekend at Mobile, so not exactly what they uh, need, but sometimes you have to take what you get. All right, uh, big trough approaching West Texas. That'll be spinning up a low in the northwestern Gulf soon. It's going to wet things down. But, hey, look at those numbers. Looking pretty good. Readings up in the 60s. Birmingham sitting at 64. Uh, and again, no really cold air in sight, although around the nation it is colder to the north, as you might expect, but nothing harshly cold for mid-February. We'll check the radar. That's the uh, Columbus Air Force Base radar. Showing a few echoes around the Mississippi Delta. Uh, but really, the big rains, I think, will be holding off until tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, early Sunday morning, as you'll see. Notice the flash flood watch is up all the way from the Texas coastal plain over into southwest Alabama. Much of the uh, Mobile County warning area under flash flood watch where they could see a whole bunch of rain. In fact, there's the uh, QPF chart. Uh, between now and Wednesday morning, this is suggesting uh, over four inches of rain, basically from New Orleans over to Mobile. Yikes. And up this way, it's going to be a good soaking. Uh, it's uh, rain amounts of two inches. I note the uh, NAM is really aggressive. The NAM is showing three inches of rain or more for Birmingham, but the GFS is not as wet. So I think one to two inches sounds pretty good here. In terms of the uh, severe weather possibilities, this is uh, the severe weather outlook, the convective outlook for the rest of today and tonight. Slight risk over the southern tip of Texas, Corpus Christi, South Padre Island, Brownsville, McAllen. Tomorrow, the guys at SPC have adjusted the risk area southward that's good for us uh, basically that risk is uh, along and south of a line from near linden to prattville to roanoke and the 30 percent probabilities are now even farther south with a really significant threat will be and that would be basically south of a line from near uh, jackson to greenville to phoenix city uh, so I think for the northern half of the state, just a lot of rain with this. And any severe weather should be closer to the Gulf Coast where the better instability will be. And then on day three, which is Sunday, uh, the risk is off to the east over parts of uh, North Florida and the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina. We'll check modeling. This is the 12Z GFS at noon tomorrow. Shortwave getting closer. Down below that, a 1,008 millibar low is forming over the northwestern Gulf. Rain begins to move in. Saturday night, notice how the GFS is farther south with the low. It's down around Grove Hill, and uh, that uh, uh, means that obviously the severe weather threat would be way south of here, if that's right. And on Sunday, the surface low is near uh, Augusta, Georgia, and moving east, and uh, the rain begins to kick out, although this run is a little slower in ending the rain. Uh, we'll look at the STP. This is the significant tornado parameter, valid at midnight local time Saturday night, tomorrow night. And, you can see that uh, the thing does uh, hit three, which is very significant, over South Alabama, uh, down there around Camden. And it just seems to be where the greatest chance of severe weather will be, the southern half of the state. And that's good for us, at least, up, up here. We'll check the RPM. This is for those of you planning something outdoors, all right? We'll go through this. This is 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if this run is correct, we're not going to have any rain at that point. It should be cloudy, but no rain. Noon tomorrow, showers begin to break out, but still the heavy stuff is off to the west. So a reasonable chance, you know, if you got something you got to do tomorrow morning, you might make it with no rain. No guarantee, but you might. Go to 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, everybody's wet, if this is right. Now look at Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. Uh, this run still has uh, some heavier rain falling here. Uh, and really, the, the GFS, the RPM, they're all slower. So I think we're going to have to have the chance of rain lingering into Sunday morning, at least maybe until mid-morning. And look at the snow over Tennessee. We'll go to noon Sunday, and this is even suggesting a chance of snowflakes maybe over extreme North Alabama up around the Tennessee border. Of course, there'd be no accumulation up there. But for uh, us down here, the rain is over at midday Sunday. And there's the uh, snow accumulation chart. 
And the better accumulating snow should be uh, over far northern Tennessee and Kentucky and West Virginia. Uh, And and again, there could be a few flakes up around High Top in Scottsboro, maybe Huntsville, but no big deal. All right, Monday of next week, uh, weather will be dry. Highs uh, around 60, and it's not going to cool down much. Sunday might be kind of a cool day. The high could be closer to 50, but... Uh, that would suggest a high close to 60. Now, Tuesday, the Gulf begins to open up. you got showers off to the west. Tuesday night at midnight, rain begins to move in here. And then midday Wednesday, the rain begins to exit the state. So, again, the GFS is suggesting we'll need to mention a chance of showers and maybe some thunder Tuesday night into Wednesday, especially Wednesday morning. And then Thursday, we're dry and mild. Hey, we'll be in the 60s if this is right. And a week from today, same thing, quiet, mild, very uneventful. We'll check the end of the forecast on March 4th and the tornado season here. Uh, and that's not a cold look, obviously. Uh, troughing to the west down below that. We're very mild and showery, but no sign of any cold air. We'll check the NAO, North Atlantic Oscillation. Well, a few members of the ensemble want to take it down to the negative zone, but many of them leave it positive. But I don't know. It uh, might be trying to tell us that something's up in about 15 days. We'll... Watch it as we go. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. My next video will be Monday morning at 7. Brian Peters, the man that looks like Colonel Sanders. We'll have the updates to the videos tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, So I take a couple of days off. Actually, we'll be in Center Point Sunday afternoon at the town hall meeting. Uh, That's 5 o'clock. If you're in that area, come by and see us. If not, you can watch it live on ABC 3340. And if you live around here, watch us on television tonight, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.